to be chairing this packed agenda of brief talks and presentations on the topic of induction for international medical graduates recruited to work in the NHS. Since its launch in 1948, the NHS has recruited international medical graduates to work alongside its UK trained staff. And yet, surprisingly, there has not been a standardized offer of induction to enable all IMGs to feel welcome fully integrated and confident to be able to offer their best to their patients in the system as a whole. The recruitment of international medical graduates has been increasing year after year. And last year, more than half of all doctors joining the GMC register qualified outside the UK or European economic area. We value these doctors coming to help deliver NHS services and we need to offer them a good induction. May I have my first slide, please, Sunny? So the purpose of this webinar is to launch the comprehensive induction, which is now implementation ready, to celebrate the immense collaboration and co-development over three years, which has made this possible, and to understand how we can all contribute to its rollout. Today's program is intended to take you along the same journey that we did, starting with understanding what IMGs experienced when they first arrived in England, to the point where we are asking our system leaders as to how they plan to help implement our output, the guidance we have. Sunny, could, I, could you go back to slide two, please, uh, to implement our output? the guidance we have collectively prepared. But first, some housekeeping points. Please remain on mute. Use the chat function to alert the IT team to any technical issues and they will respond. If you drop out for any reason, simply rejoin using the original link. This webinar is being recorded so you can listen to it again. Please post your questions on chat. Depending on how we go, there may not be time even for one one or two questions, and I apologize for that in advance. However, we do plan um, to upload all questions and comments on our Imperial College Northwest London Applied Research Center uh, hosted Ethnicity and Health Unit web pages, together with the responses which we plan to put together with the help of all collaborators. This may take about a month, please bear with us, but we will have this uploaded in due course. And now we're going to take you on that journey we took so that you understand the pathway that led us to today. So we begin with Dr. Mathikin describing her experience of arriving in the NHS, followed immediately by the observations of a group of senior educational supervisors and their HR colleagues, Sujesh Bansal, Samir Ahmed, Zarina Khan, Tracy Mitchell, Saeed Ahmed, Rochelle Ramkishan, and Bhartika Pereira at the front line, who are witness to these challenges faced by trainees and colleagues who come to work with them. In the interest of time, I'm not gonna introduce any of our speakers, although this is disappointing to me because they come with so much knowledge, experience and commitment. However, if you look at their screens, you will see their names. And if you look at the program, you will see their titles and organizational affiliations and details. So now over to you, Siobhan. Good afternoon, everyone. A group who currently constitute a higher percentage of new registrants on the GMC register than both UK and EEA graduates combined. I was reassured. That I can keep think of IMGs. Their journey often begins many years before their first NHS job. It begins when they make the decision to emigrate to a foreign country, leaving behind their friends and family. 
It begins when a medic parent makes the decision, fully knowing that the expensive childcare for under fives without a social network for informal childcare means a significant financial hit for many years. Many will need to start talking to patients in a different language than they spoke until then. I'm not a big fan of the word resilience, especially when there is a risk of inferring that doctors should thrive and never burn out despite the systemic issues, if only they are strong enough or resilient enough. But I use it in this context to say, yes, IMGs are resilient. Hence, there is absolutely no need to test their resilience further by putting them in the deep end, by asking them to start with a row of weekend or night shifts before they've had a shadowing period for the day job or got the login to the IT system. The examples are many on IMG social media peer groups week after week. New IMGs in non-training posts, not having named supervisors for many months after starting, not knowing that the home office is not going to cancel their visas for taking sick leave when they are unwell not going out to get even food during lockdown, worried whether they might be breaking any rules or be referred to the GMC. When a single mother does not know what the different types of childcare means, nanny, au pair, childminder, nursery. When IMGs do not know until much after the deadline that there exists something called relocation expenses, even if this is only from the first port of entry to the UK and usually limited to those in a training post. This is hugely disappointing after spending thousands of pounds in visas, travel and exams to get to the point of the first NHS job. I will not touch on the need for personalized clinical induction or matters of discrimination or intersectionality due to time. But I wish to say that when impressions are hastily made based on their command of the English language or confidence in talking to patients, and these conflated with competence, we are failing our IMGs. When only IMGs turn up for IMG events, we are losing the opportunity to make allies from local graduates and trainers. Foreign doctors do need time to unlearn some things which differ in clinical treated by a relative or doctor known to the family, unlike the GMC guidance for the UK. Our Dean, Professor Subodh Dave, once asked a group of psychiatry trainees who are IMGs whether anyone in their trust asked them to share their experiences of working in another country, in another healthcare system. There was no one in the room who could say yes. We bring ideas for frugal innovation for an underfunded NHS. We bring cultural literacy to care better for our diverse patients. If only there's someone to listen if we can stop seeing IMGs and all foreign staff as cheap labor for the many gaps in the NHS, then we'll truly make change. So is there hope? Yes, indeed. This event today embodies hope for me, but it needs to be everyone's responsibility, not just that of IMGs ourselves or diaspora organizations to keep shouting from the rooftops and Twitter, how can I forget? I heard a quote once in the context of allyship that the most privileged people should be shouting the loudest. Now the good bits. My son attends a state school in a very diverse part of England with children who speak 40 languages. Many Indian doctors like me could never have Pakistani colleagues or friends until we moved to the UK. As a woman, I have, as a woman, I have felt more independent and safe living in the UK. The positives are many, but often due to the rough start, it takes IMGs many years, even a decade, to acculturate enough to be able to have that optimistic lens. I believe we can do better, and I'm so grateful to all the seniors and peers across organizations who've been involved in this project. I hope that the few pockets of good practice will become the minimum standard all across the NHS. If we have psychologically safe and friendly environments for IMGs, recruitment and retention will become a hill rather than the insurmountable mountain it is right now. Word of mouth spreads like fire and places that have supportive bosses and peer groups will have plenty applicants. I end by quoting the GMC's Caring for Doctors, Caring for Patients report about the ABC of doctors' well-being, particularly the B and C, belonging and competence. If IMGs feel like they belong, 
and they're given the tools to transition to work in a different system as competent doctors, they will thrive and likely continue to work in the NHS. My take home message is to the seniors and leaders, thank you for influencing change in your organization. IMGs. I wish to say that there truly are many allies trying to make things better. The launch of this guidance and the collaborative effort behind it is proof of that. You are not alone. Thank you. That's my six minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Could I just move swiftly on to our Sujesh and his colleagues to um, give us their perspectives as the educational supervisors and people in, in, in who often have the role to play in making IMG lives better. So over to you all. Thanks, um, thanks Mala. I would like to reassure Siobhan that, to be frank, we, we have a great, uh, a superb uh, standards induction and uh, support program, which uh, we, we have developed and piloted uh, over the last six, 12 months. Uh, to be frank, um, what we have felt is uh, that it really gives a lot. It starts a collaborative work between not only the human resources, but but uh, between the medical uh, supervisors, the education supervisors, as well as the director of medical educations as well. So we are really very, very excited. After seeing piloting it, we have really realized that it does work. But of course, there are always some challenges. And I would like to invite Samir to talk about one of the particular challenge he faced. Uh, thanks very much, Sujesh. I think one of the uh, challenges of this IMG induction is that it's, it's something like a postcode lottery, really, because uh, some directorates, some trusts have a very robust IMG induction in place, whereas others don't. Even our trust uh, was a very typical example of it, where some of the directorates had a very good process in place, whereas others didn't. So I think this is where the induction uh, comes into place. And this is why we were able to standardize this process and uh, so that every IMG, no matter which trust they join, which directorate they join, they will be able to have the same uh, induction system in place. And it's been a pleasure to lead this in my trust. And I'm sure Bhatika will say a bit more about you know, how an uh, IMG lead uh, role comes into play in this. Uh, yeah, thanks, Amelia. Yeah, so I'm the IMG lead in Barnet, Enfield and Herringham Mental Health Trust, which, uh, Trust in North London. And this is a new role which I started early this year. And the aim is to support all IMGs joining NHS for the first time. One of the tasks, uh, one of my tasks is to help IMG, IMGs to recontextualize their knowledge to work in a different healthcare system. As you know, in medicine, we all work in systems or different communities of practice. However, these systems or communities are different from one country to another or one region to another. So it's really important to help IMGs to be an uh, active and valued participant in these systems to be able to enjoy their work and succeed in their roles. So oh, as the IMG lead over the last couple of months, I've been learning different ways to do this, how to um, and, and how to uh, support IMG leads to be part of uh, part of their healthcare delivery system. So it has been a rewarding and a fulfilling role, which I believe can make a huge difference. With that, I'd like to go to Said, who'll talk about the IMG office. Thank you, Bhatika. Thank you, everyone, for joining this uh, uh, momentous occasion. Now, for me, I think joining the IMG group was to make sure that we do something sustainable beyond our own careers so that we don't reinvent the wheel every couple of years. And to do that, we have to set up an IMG office. And with no particular role is important, but combined together, we can then make a sustainable change with your particular trust, and then locally and nationally. And I've gained a lot from mentorship in joining this team to create the IMG office, and then having key roles in that office, which includes the lead that Bhatika is doing in his uh, trust, and then are we having an IMG fellow from somebody in the IMG community and having important elements such as HR and also senior sign off through the medical director's office. Once you have the such people with buy in from your trust, then you're more likely to make it sustainable beyond your own career and therefore not reinvent the wheel each time a new IMG issue occurs. This way you can 
to say that you're feeling supported and in anticipation of this new document being released our trust is in a good position and i want all of the trust to be in a similar position to deliver this document so the next question on delivery is only through an img office i mentioned one of the key individuals in the img office which is hr which is usually the first point of call in any hospital recruitment system so i want to hand you over to my colleague tracy who will talk to you a little bit about hr involvement in an img office Thank you, Saeed. Um, coming to live in the UK and work in the NHS is a big thing. And we set out to try and give IMGs as much information up front as we can. So the Trust already had an online first day kit for all new starters, providing a lot of information about the Trust. So we developed a further IMG first day kit. There are a lot of generic guides out there, but we wanted something specific to Newcastle. And it covers everything from organising where to live, including council tax, waste collection, home insurance, TV licences, tax, how to register with GP and cultural aspects, including the local Geordie accent. Um, we send the link to new IMGs before they start so they can familiarise themselves before they get to the UK. I'm happy to share it afterwards. I'm just in the process of adding a few bits to it. Otherwise, I would have shared the link today. And as part of the process, we ask directorates to identify a buddy for the new starter, preferably somebody who's an IMG themselves, who can help with some of the practicalities of settling into the UK. Um, we've introduced, produced a short guide on the role of the buddy and we're about to run a short training session for potential buddies. Um, feedback from IMGs is that the two biggest challenges for them on arrival are accommodation and bank accounts. Um, accommodation is a challenge because they don't have a credit history um, and often ask for a lot of money up front. So we've linked up with a local company who have developed rental only blocks of, of apartments and reached an agreement that they'll accept our informal assurance of the larger employer in the city rather than us acting as a formal guarantor. Um, I'd advise that you, book, you look into getting the GMC to deliver their half day welcome to UK practice programme on site if you can and offer it to IMGs and other trusts in your region. It's a really good session and offers a useful networking opportunity for IMGs. Uh, the final mes message I would leave you with is that I think for us, it felt like it was going to be very straightforward. Everybody supported it in principle. It was a no brainer. Uh, but the challenge has been getting the various individual elements to come together and get the process embedded. And we're still working on that. So the final message I'll leave you with is don't be disheartened if your pro program doesn't take off in instantly. Keep going. Thank you. I'll now pass you over to um, Serena to talk about mentoring and supervisor support. Thanks, Tracy. So um, having the, the IMG framework has really given us the opportunity to think about other activities and the whole framework of support that we can provide for international medical graduate colleagues. And for us, this really made us think about what are the things that we could do to make the best um, welcome and experience for IMG um, doctors uh, joining our organisation. And so what we did is we, we thought about mentoring support. We're incredibly lucky to have a number of doctors in our organisation who uh, are absolutely wanting to help and support some colleagues um, who have come into our organisation um, and people who have had lived experience, the doctors who have been working on, in our system for, um, for, for a number of years and who really have walked in the shoes of, of colleagues who are joining um, the NHS for the first time and are working in the UK for the, UT for, for the first time. And we've run some bespoke mentoring sessions um, for these doctors so that we can link them up um, to provide uh, friendly welcomes, informal advice and support and have someone to lean on when they need to. Um, the other thing that we've done is we've thought about how we can work really collaboratively and closely with our educational supervisors who are also really key and critical to providing um, a shadowing opportunity, um, a, a kind of a local induction, again, being that um, person who can be, really work with them and, and support them over a sustained period of time to help them integrate and to support them. Um, and we've run some workshops for our educational supervisors. We ran one in April and were blown away by the fact that we had 80 edu educational supervisors who joined, who were all really acknowledging the important uh, work that's happening here um, and really wanting to think about the best level of support that they could provide for international medical graduate colleagues. We're really excited to be involved in this work and we really want to grow um, our provision and our framework of support for IMG doctors who are joining our organisation. I think it's evidently clear that we're all in different stages in our organisations of how we're landing this work. And I know Rochelle has got some reflections and some suggestions around next steps. So thank you very much. And I, yes, we've heard lots of really fantastic examples and the guidance is really brilliant at kind of giving you lots of things to take away. I have to say any organisation at any stage can utilise this. And rather than wait till you have a perfect programme to launch, there are some immediate quick wins. 
whilst working on arrangements and even funding, almost in a QI approach that can be really helpful. Just in terms of thinking around IMGs, this is not only towards locally employed doctors, but also to doctors in training. And with August rotations, just a month away with changeover, a simple start is just to send an email, either try to identify the doctors to welcome them, to try and have a name to contact who they can reach out to, not even via, not just via email, but even a WhatsApp number for simple troubleshooting, just to help them to get some familiarity to the local area or some quick questions regarding visas can be hugely powerful. We know that many of our international doctors starting on the training scheme, a large proportion um, more possibly in some specialities, more than 50% are coming from abroad. So it is a brilliant opportunity. I'd like to end with saying thank you very much to Professor Rao and the whole team for pulling this guidance together. There is lots to be done. Don't wait for it all to be perfect. From today, share the guidance. Do look at it, even something as simple as just getting in touch. Thank you. Rochelle, thank you so much. What a fabulous, you know, uh, and and um, uplifting message from this 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 amazing group. If we were in a room, I'd, I'd say, you know, could could we all um, put our hands together for this group? So thank you so much for uh, you know this shared group presentation from the front line, because now from the front line we're going to the organizational level um, and to share with us evidence and what has shaped their perspectives at Health Education England and the BMA. We're going to hear from Dr. Vijay Nair and Dr. Andrew Barton. So Vijay and Andrew, are you there? Please, um, you know, uh, give you. us your perspectives. Vijay first. Thank you, Marla. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Vijay Nair. I work for Health Education England. Uh, I'm the uh, primary care lead for different entertainment. And I would just like to endorse all the fantastic comments made by my colleagues so far. Uh, as you've heard, a large proportion of our trainees are trained overseas, faced by the challenges of living in a new culture, but also working within a different healthcare system. But on top of that, they have to adapt to new ways of teaching and learning. So an effective induction program is actually really essential. And it's not just on day one, it's a process. It's a process for that transition uh, when they start working in this country. And most importantly, and this has been mentioned as well, we need to build on their knowledge and skills and experience for the benefit of everyone, uh, as we heard earlier from Siobhan. So Marla, on behalf of HEE, I would like to really promote and endorse this programme. I thank all of those who have been involved, especially, of course, yourself. This will be a fantastic resource uh, for all our educators, our directors of medical education, the trust, and the wider faculty to deliver really effective uh, education for all our learners. Thank you, Marla. We did, thank you so much. Health Education England has got a massive role to play in taking this forward, and we'll be coming back to that um, towards the end of the session. So thank you for that. Andrew, welcome uh, to, to this launch. What's the BMA perspective? Over to you. Thank you very much, Marla. Thank you for inviting me. Hello, everyone. This is a grand day. As the Trade Union for Doctors, the BMA has been fully supportive of getting this programme together, and I am personally pleased we are launching today. The BMA's role is to improve the working conditions for doctors, and I, the IMG induction is specially needed at this moment in time. I want to really take the opportunity to recognise the perseverance of Marla to get us to this point. It's been difficult and frustrating at times, but we've finally got a really good collaboration going and we have succeeded. So we must all revel in the praise at this launch as we need to revitalize ourselves for the next stage. That's of course, implementing this induction program across the health systems, across the country, Please feel free to contact me at the BMA if necessary. And I think you'll hear a message from Dr. Nagpal, our chair, uh, later in the event. Thank you, Marla. Well done. Andrew, thank you so much for that. And, and you know, isn't it a little bit of a pity that um, today uh, sort of clashes with the annual conference of the BMA? So we, we, we've lost many people who would have attended this 
uh, had that not been uh, going going on in parallel. But thank you so much for taking the time to come and share your message with us. So thanks, Andrew. So now we move swiftly on to just just um, um, sort of reflecting on what the next steps were. With all these IMG experiences and organizational perspectives, uh, which we gathered during 2019, they led us to put together a draft induction document, which of course needed to be evaluated for us to know whether it'd be effective. So next, we have Dr. Stephanie Armstrong uh, from Lincoln University, who led the evaluation to share some headlines from her study. Hello, Hello. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm just looking at how I can share my um, my slide. Um, so just bear with me for half a second. Does uh, Sonny have your slides? He there? does. Yes, he should have been sent it. Um, I'll start talking, and then if it, okay. if, it, if Sonny's able uh, to pop it up, that would be perfect. Um, Sonny, do you have Steph's slides, please? If you could show them, that'd be brilliant. Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 bring them on as you talk. It's just the one slide, so it just can sure. stay there the whole time I'm talking. So fantastic, thank you. So um, as Marla said, we um, were able to undertake a rapid evaluation of the um, IMG induction draft. Um, and um, we're very grateful for the funding that we received for that from the GMC, which was administered by the, the North West London ARC. Um, and we had three stakeholder groups within the evaluation. So we had the newly appointed IMGs, um, the medical supervisors and the HR representatives who were directly involved in, in um, those IMG appointments and supporting the IMGs. And we started by evaluating how they felt about the induction process and all participants obviously agreed that um, a good induction is, is really important. Um, we're very grateful to our colleague, um, Sujesh Bansai, who we've already heard from today, who developed a gap analysis checklist um, as part of that process, which allows HR and medical supervisors to um, identify areas within the induction guidance that maybe need to be developed within their trust or um, highlighting areas of good practice that they maybe already have. And all of our participants agreed that this was useful and should be included in the final document. Um, within my slide, there's some statistics. Hopefully it will come up shortly. Um, but one of the things that came up quite clearly was that, was that there was a big difference, a big gap um, in the pastoral or person uh, sort of day to day living um, issues that IMGs faced, and ninety percent of our um, IMGs that we that we polled um, said that they found problems with those day to day um, aspects, things like setting up utility bills. Um, finding somewhere to live, finding accommodation, finding schools for their children um, was a really high priority. Um, and these aspects considerably impacted on, on the IMGs and they felt that they were impaired in their ability to undertake their work well because of the added levels of stress and those feelings of uncertainty that come just through re, um, relocating to a different country anyway and it, it being made worse. Um, the Welcome to UK practice workshops were extremely helpful and all of our IMGs that we spoke to found these incredibly important for understanding their role within the um, NHS and the role of the GMC, as well as knowing what help and support there is available and how they can go about getting that support. Shadowing um, within the first couple of weeks was also found to be really important, uh, particularly for the speech and communication aspects of the, indu in the induction program and also the speciality induction. Being able to watch colleagues interacting with patients um, was highly informative and medical supervisors and HR reps also indicated that that short period of shadowing was vital to give the IMGs the best start. Um, several IMGs mentioned that it really helped to become much more familiar with their regional um, aspects, regional as accents, dialogues, um, dialects, and so on, that they were able to more readily pick this up if they were able to shadow. Finally, we did a very um, 
a rudimentary cost analysis of the of the IMD induction program. And you can see that there was quite a bit of variation between the different trusts. We had six trusts involved in this initial evaluation. What we found was those trusts that were more established that had pre-existing um, IMG inductions tended to have slightly higher costs because they included um, aspects that perhaps those um, trusts that were newer to the induction didn't include. But we came up with an average cost of around about £2,000 um, per IMG to go through the induction process. And that's that's my final part. Thank you, Marla. Thank you very much, Steph. Um, I wonder, Sunny, if you can bring on um, my uh, slides, please. Um, if you would, that would be absolutely brilliant. Because, um, you know, so from, from all of that, um, you know, what, what, was, what was the next step? It was, of course, to put, the, uh, put an induction program together. And I'm about to show you what that looked like. Um, Sunny, um, could we have my slide? The next one. Yes, please. So um, we, we, this is the draft we had prepared. And which, because of the evaluation, has been possible to finalize, and we can suggest with confidence that it 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 uh, builds on the kinds of good practice and best practice we saw around the country, and you heard uh, Sujesh and others speaking about. We we based it on IMG experience, and now you've got this, which you can download from these two web links, which I believe are uploaded on your chat. Uh, the guidance uh, includes uh, a welcome and pastoral care section, something on professional practice induction. Uh, IMGs um, often spend a whole year, we, we, we heard, without understanding what appraisals and revalidation was all about. Uh, there's, a, there's an excellent language and communication section. IT is something they really asked for induction on and specialty induction. We had the Royal Colleges of Psychiatry, uh, uh, Anesthesia, Emergency Medicine, Pediatrics and Child Health, Surgery and Obstetrics and Gynecology send us excellent specialty-based um, induction sections, which we've added. I'm pretty certain that more colleges will follow on this. Next slide, please, Sunny. Um, and, and, you know, this none of this would have been possible without the extreme extraordinary amount of enthusiasm, commitment, and collaboration that we, 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 we uh, ended up securing along the way. Uh, and you will find all of these contributors listed in the induction because we, we felt strongly that it had to be today and going forward needed also to be a celebration of how all of these organizations, BMA, NHS England, HEE, um, Medical Protection Society, General Medical Council, and so on and so forth, but also individuals came together to achieve this. So now, um, you know, uh, um, the question is, we have this output, how does it fit with NHS England's workforce race equality strategy? And to explain that link, we've got Professor Partha Kaur here, and um, I wonder whether Partha, you'd come and explain that link. Thank you, Partha. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to actually start off just by saying, which uh, we haven't mentioned yet, a big thank you to Mala, yourself, uh, Tista, and everybody, Siobhan, everybody who's been involved in this. This is a fabulous, fabulous program in place. And I think those of you not aware, uh, so we are trying from NHS England to have established people in charge to take on the good work and take it forward. So I always say a very simple narrative. I myself am an international medical graduate as I have been many other speakers uh, so far. And I personally have been blessed by some amazing support along the way, but not everybody has. And as I recently said, it thereby falls on us, as for everybody else, to try and support colleagues who come from other countries to try and help the NHS, especially in a time when you've got so much workforce issues going around. Some of you may have already heard the good news that uh, the case of Manjula Arora has been overturned by the GMC, which is fabulous news. That's another example of somebody coming from abroad needing all the support she needs. And it's been so fantastic to see so many people come together. Those of you who know me will know my love for Marvel Comics. And as I say, I'll, I'll use a, a quote from Avengers, which says, you know, the time has changed and we can never go back. 
and I think you know it's very important for us to understand this. This is not us trying to change the narrative, and NHS England's view on this uh, are going to be very simple. This is a fabulous program created by some amazing people. We don't need to recreate it again. We just need to make it happen. There's plenty of IMGs in every trust. There's plenty of people who are beyond IMGs and willing to help. And that's all we are asking for. You know, give a supporting arm. This is not about everything being structured. This is also about being a pastor, being a help. And it's just think of yourself in another country. You're trying there. And uh, I'll finish with this. Uh, I, I don't say the story to many people. And uh, when I, when my dad came around to drop me off again, not many people are fortunate enough to have that. When he left, I, I remember going back to my room and feeling very lonely and sitting there and crying. Uh, and as an adult, it was a very tough place to be in. Some people don't realize it. And all I needed was a helping hand. And it was some an, an SHO in those days. John Gilson came across and just took me out for a drink. And one of the best things has ever happened. So support is not just about support is also having an arm around the shoulder and being there to answer queries and being a good friend. So I think that's the request from us from on a human level and on a policy level. We fully expect then we would drive this through and this becomes part and parcel of NHS care going forwards. So thank you again to Marla for all the work and everybody else involved and I'll finish there. Thank you. Partha, thank you so much for that immensely encouraging and uplifting message. You know, and you've been very generous in your place. So thank you so much. And, you know, it's people like you who are needed um, at NHS England to ensure that the right level of support the the and people are allowed the time to invest a little bit in it and get this going because the level of investment is modest, but it's actually the permission needed from the system, which 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 um, sometimes needs to be unblocked in order to make things happen. So thank you so much for your for your message, Partha. Um, you know one of the things, and Partha, this will interest you. The guidance isn't the only output of this massive collaboration. We're delighted that Health Education England, too, have alongside this developed an e-learning resource, which is very exciting for uh, IMGs and staff with responsibility for their induction. And so Lynn Rustecki and Dave Beardmore are here to tell us more about it. So thank you, Dave and Lynn. Thank you, Marla. Um, our team has been working together with eLearning for Health to create the digitalized guide to the national induction that IMGs will be able to access before and during their transition to the NHS. The aim of this project was to create an engaging session um, to describe some of the common challenges new IMGs can face when they arrive and the reasons why an induction is essential to introduce IMGs to the content of the induction program and to the different areas of support they should expect from employers and educators, and to encourage new IMGs to reflect on their own learning needs as they prepare to start up in their, in their new posts. We decided that um, to increase engagement, we would like to use a guide to narrate the session and the professional development team in London had previously worked with Dr. Amit Gupta, a consultant in neonatal intensive care in Oxford, who's an IMG himself, and he has a, a real interest in and a wealth of experience in supporting doctors trained overseas. Amit very kindly agreed to narrate the session and also generously offered to make his department available for filming. He also invited IMGs from his team and their supervisors to share some of their thoughts on adapting both to life in the UK and to professional practice in the NHS. The e-learning session itself is structured around a series of short films. Each one is linked to a key theme of the induction guidance and followed by a summary of the support that will be provided by the trusts. And each section concludes with some reflective questions on the learning and links to further resources. I hand over to Dave now, um, who will show you the web page and some short video extracts from the e-learning session. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. <clears throat> and uh, it's great to actually be here and have the opportunity today to share with you the web page and the resources and the guidance and a short preview of what is to come from the e-learning resource. As you can see on the screen now, we have the actual website, uh, web page itself, 
And as I scroll down the web page, you can see that the partners involved in this program are listed. The guidance and the, the, the vital information that we've already talked about within the webinar is located here. And you've got access to a web only version and you've also got access to a printable version, which is really, really handy. As we scroll down the page, you can actually see where the e-learning resource is talked about. And as Lynn has already said, the e-learning resource is a collection of really insightful videos from Amit and his team of doctors as they share lots of insight and experience um, for their, their way of working and how, and how to, um, what to expect from your, your time in your role. As we move down the page further, you can see then we have what we call the induction on professional medical practice in the UK. And this area gives you lots and lots of valuable resources to tap into. By clicking on each drop down, you can actually get access to existing content that's on the uh, hub portal at the moment for various number of different, different uh, you know, topics and really useful information, a wealth of information. <clears throat> and we try, excuse me, and we try to make the, uh, the overall package uh, really beneficial to neurodiverse learning across the board. Further, as we go down the page, it explains about primary and secondary audiences and who will benefit from this information, the key objectives, that are the foundation of what we've tried to achieve, the program team, the project team, and how to actually access the content. And I'm really delighted now to actually share with you the first of two videos where it gives you a flavor of what is to come. Um, so please enjoy. Doctors who first qualified overseas, or IMGs as they're sometimes called, represent around 30% of the medical workforce in the NHS. These doctors bring valuable expertise and diversity to the delivery of clinical care to the UK's multicultural population. Hello. My name is Amit Gupta, and I am here to introduce to you a new induction program for international medical graduates. I myself am an international graduate, and I came to the UK 22 years ago. I was back in 1998. Adapting to medical practice in the UK can be challenging for any doctor, regardless of where they were from and how experienced they are. Some of these challenges can be anticipated, but many may be unexpected and can be difficult to overcome without support. Mistakes and misunderstandings can easily happen. Research shows that unless IMGs experience a positive start in their new roles, there is likely to be an impact on their confidence, sense of inclusion and prospects for career progression. Induction is vital if IMGs new to the UK are to understand clearly what they need to do and work effectively as NHS professionals. For these reasons, a new national induction program has been introduced to ensure that all IMGs are welcomed, valued and supported as they move through UK clinical practice. Okay, that was the first of the two videos. And it is just to give you a flavor of what is to come. So I'm gonna give you now the second video, which is the concluding message, or part of the concluding message to, to give you a flavor. There may be a significant contrast between your expectations of working as a doctor in the UK and the reality of the NHS working environment. We hope that this induction will provide the information and support you need to prepare for your move, and to ensure a positive start that will build your confidence, encourage a sense of well-being and belonging for you and your family, and lead to a long, rewarding career. Well, I mean, we love having trainees here. I think that's really important that people know, to, to know that they're very, very welcome wherever they're coming from. My message to uh, those who are planning to come here is that the, here the system is very open and helpful and we do uh, get the expected help. So after joining here, I'm more satisfied that I took the right decision and I'm really happy uh, I can say that. I'm, I'm enjoying quite a lot here, to be honest. There are some 
uh, there are a little uh, challenges which I think everyone has. But yeah, apart from that, I think it has been great, and and I, I'm I'm completely loving it to be honest. So I hope you found this induction program to be useful. And that was the second video we wanted to show you. Just that little preview. I'm just going to take you back quickly now to the web page to access the e-learning content, which is going to be available very soon. You need to either register or view here on the website. This will take you through then to the e-learning content and you'll be able to access the full uh, library of the nine videos and actually experience the whole resource in its entirety. I'm going to hand you now back to Marla. Um, I just want to say it's been a fantastic experience working on this program. And I think going forward, it will benefit so many. Um, lots of credit must go to Amit for all the hard work and his team in creating these videos and for Lynn as well to actually put in together a lot of the scripting and structure that you can see in the session. Thank you. Dave and Lynn, that's absolutely fantastic. And, and I can't wait to take a, take a better look, a more detailed look at this. It's, it's the launch for us all. And none of us has actually had a proper look at this. And I just can't wait to do that. Thank you so much. That was really exciting. Now, quickly on to our second session. Um, how are we all going to help roll out the guidance and help embed and normalize it uh, into routine ways to support and develop our staff? We're very fortunate to have senior leaders responsible for workforce transformation, professional standards, and NHS resolution to share with us their thoughts on this. And I invite Zoe Penn, Cheryl Samuels, and Vicky Bolla to um, share with us their wisdom of how we go about achieving this. Thank you all. Who'd like to go first? Is it Zoe? Yeah, that'd be great. Um... I hope everybody can hear me. Really, really pleased to have got to this this point. It's been a bit very long, slow haul. For for NHS London, this is part of a much wider work program to do with the medical workforce safe race equality standards. And a good introduction to NHS practice has got to be the cornerstone of how we start people in this business. And it has to be routine. This is not about really doing anything special. This is this is providing what our doctors need for a smooth um, start to their career. I'm also prompted by I do a lot of um, professional standards work, and that's very much about saying, um, how do we um, not just welcome people, but give them a community to belong to so that they can they can get support, not just for their clinical decision making, but also for their careers, for their families and for living a happy life within the NHS. So I really commend this. We absolutely have to start somewhere and it's here. And this is really exciting moment. Thank you. I think, um, so I'm Cheryl Samuels, um, Deputy Director of Workforce Transformation for London. Um, I think this is just an amazing piece of work. Um, the collaborative effort that we've pulled together has just been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think as influential line managers and leaders, we've got a real responsibility and a privilege in that we shape the experience of overseas doctors when they join our organisations. The IMG induction aligns with the aspirations and the collective ambition of the NHS leaders within our services. And we need to make sure that we're creating those compassionate and inclusive cultures that support our IMG doctors. This is our opportunity as a HR profession to come together with our PGME and clinical leaders to make this a reality and to ensure that it's consistently implemented and rolled out so that we actually improve the staff experience for those individuals and also enabling them to feel settled. And most importantly, we want them to reach their full potential because they're part of our system. Thank you, I'll hand you over. Thanks, thanks. NHS resolution exists to support the NHS when things go wrong, including incidents, disputes and concerns about performance. We do this through providing indemnity to the NHS for the risks involved in delivering healthcare services and by providing 
expert advice and support on the management of concerns about the performance of doctors. Our aim is to resolve issues fairly with support for the practitioner and whilst protecting patient safety. NHS Resolution will be supporting this induction by incorporating its principles into our advice to trusts. Our publication, Being Fair, outlines a consistent approach towards staff in relation to incidents and errors. It is somewhat inevitable that something will go wrong during everyone's time working in the NHS. From our work involving teams and individuals in difficulty, we recognise the importance of ensuring practitioners are well supported with robust induction during the early stages of their appointment to ensure they understand the clinical environment and what is expected of them. NHS Resolution is delighted to support this incredible induction programme to highlight to IMGs as a hugely valuable part of the workforce, how you can access resources and support to help you when things go awry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zoe, Cheryl and Vicky. So now the question is, how are we all going to help? The induction is truly everyone's responsibility and I'm absolutely delighted that we've been informed we have the formal support. And Sunny, I wonder whether you could show my slide five, please. Um, uh, we've been, you, the next one, this is it. Um, I've been delighted that we've been informed. We have the formal support of the Federation of Ethnic Minority Healthcare Organizations on Implementation. And what a privilege that the uh, presidents of the two largest associations, the British Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, BAPIO, Dr. Ramesh Mehta, and the Medical Association yeah. of Nigerians across Great Britain, Dr. Chris Agbo, are here to confirm their support to this strategy. So over to you, Ramesh and Chris, please. Mala, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. And may I start by congratulating Mala, congratulating you to have organized this absolutely brilliant induction program. As you said, this is the day of celebration. However, I must caution that although it's celebration, this is only the first step to ensure that these international medical graduates are looked after properly. It's not a brainer to say that if the staff is happy, the patients will be happy. We must ensure, and as Siobhan said, that these international medical graduates are not treated as pair of hands to do the clinical work and not looked after properly. Mala, I'm really pleased that you managed to uh, get collaboration from almost all the stakeholders. But I think it's very important that the NHS employers and the trust accept this. And every single hospital and trust must use this platform to ensure that all the IMGs are properly inducted. So in this endeavor, I can assure you that my organization, the British Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, BAPIO, will provide full support. Thank you very much. Ramesh, thank you so much for that. Um, a, a really wonderful message. Do we have Chris um, here at the event, um, please? Um, Sunny, do we know if he's if he's here? Because... No, unfortunately, we're still waiting for Chris to join. Okay, I I know he was overseas very recently, and it's possible that his perhaps his flight has been delayed or some such thing. So we'll wait and see if he arrives. Um, so we'll move on swiftly to the next next bit, you know, as we uh, uh, as as we um, start uh, drawing to a close. In case you're left in any doubt, we have full support of the system's leadership, who have sent us some video messages as they unfortunately could not attend this event in person. So could we now play the messages sent to us by Dr. Jan Nagpal, Dr. Navina Evans, and Dr. Rob Henry, please? Uh, and finally, in this section, I invite um, Tista Chakravati Ganon, who leads on induction at the General Medical Council, to share her thoughts with us. 
She has been a steadfast ally, champion, and supporter, without whose inputs the induction program and its evaluation would simply not have got off the ground. So I want to say a personal thank you to Tista for her friendship to the cause, um, but also to me personally, Tista. So at the end of the video messages, I'd love you to come and, 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 and tell us a little bit about where the GMC is on this and, and what support we can expect in the future from the GMC and from you personally. So the video messages, please, first. I'm delighted that the British Medical Association has been a partner in the development of these standardised induction programmes for IMGs. For far too long, uh, IMGs have not been given the support that they deserved when they come to work in the UK. And consequently, they've suffered disadvantage, a poorer experience and additional hurdles. I very much hope that these standardised inductions will become a reality and the norm in all NHS organisations in the nation so that IMGs can thrive, realise their full potential for the benefit of both the health service and for patients themselves. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak today on the launch of this programme. I am really delighted on behalf of AGE to support the NHS induction programme to both welcome and value our international medical graduates. Last year, half of the nearly 20,000 doctors who started working in the NHS were international medical graduates, and a large proportion of these colleagues were trainees. Um, I myself come from overseas and have experienced the challenges faced when settling into the culture of a new country. I know firsthand that migration challenging uh, at, is challenging at the best of times um, with its um, attendant transition of culture, uh, climate, uh, community, uh, and this is made even more difficult when it involves working and training as a doctor in a different healthcare setting. Now, you international medical graduates are an essential part of the NHS workforce, both historically and presently, and often can have ha uh, a very diverse journeys uh, compared to our UK qualified peers. Um, now, international medical graduates bring different perspectives, insights and skills, uh, which the NHS um, wants to harness and embrace. So this induction programme will help to welcome uh, uh, the international medical graduates and at the same time provide valuable information and resources to help settle quickly into the new environment. Um, and this is to the benefit not only of the doctors who are joining us, but also to the teams uh, what they will be working with and ultimately for the people who we care for. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Rob Hendry, the Medical Director at the Medical Protection Society. As a mutual not-for-profit organisation which protects the professional interests of doctors and healthcare workers around the world, we're proud to be able to support this induction programme. We're keen to do all we can to make colleagues who are trained outside the UK feel as welcome, valued and supported as possible. And I look forward to building on this work in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Hello, I'm Dr. Rob. Hello, and um, Marla, thank you. Although it would have been lovely to hear from Rob twice. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much for your kind introduction earlier, Marla. I know this has been, it's been an absolute lab labor of love and I've really valued working so closely with you. Um, so I'm just going to say a few words because we're pretty much at time. At, at the GMC, to give that perspective, we have called for this induction way back in 2011, actually, because it was clear from our data, our research, that IMG colleagues aren't always welcome and valued, as we've heard today that they are also at higher risk of referral. And of course, by not supporting our IMG colleagues, we're also not supporting patient safety. So 
given that lack of a standardized induction at the time, as some of you who are viewing today will be aware, we created our own program, Welcome to UK Practice, Practice which Steph mentioned earlier, and we'll continue to deliver that as part of the program. But in our view, as many have said on the call today, it is absolutely incumbent that any employer recruiting IMG colleagues, IMG colleagues who bring so much as we've heard, it is incumbent on you to support them through this type of induction. And that is our view at the GMC. We know, as Siobhan shared, that some IMGs don't even have their basic needs met. And I've started to think of it in terms of Maslow's hierarchy. You know, when you, we're not meeting needs such as uh, basic accommodation, the roof over our heads, bank accounts, where to get food and shopping, the arm around the shoulder, as Partha said, when we're not meeting those needs, never mind the differences between the healthcare systems and medical practice. That is, that's a huge gap. So to finish, um, a, I am absolutely delighted. We at the GMC are absolutely delighted that this has now launched. Delighted that it will be rolled out at exemplar sites, I believe, before an eventual national mandate, but also delighted that it is available to you now even if you aren't one of those formal exemplar sites for rollout, be an exemplar anyway. As Rochelle said, you don't have to wait. So be that exemplar now. Please pick this up and please support your IMGs. Thank you. Tista, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Now, our speakers have been absolutely fabulous with timekeeping, and I really am so grateful. However, that said, we've had a slippage of maybe about three or four minutes, and that does mean, as I feared, we've no time for questions. But I want to promise all our attendees that we will collect the um, questions and feedback and comments. We'll curate them. We will get the answers for you, and I promise you we will put them on our ethnicity and health unit web link. So I'm not going to take any questions now, but uh, draw this to a close. So Sunny, may I have my sixth slide, please, if I may? Thank you so much. And as, as Tista said, and, and several before her, this is literally just the beginning. What a fabulous launch event it's been, but this is truly just the beginning because implementing and embedding this induction into employment and training practice are going to require ongoing collaboration over many months and years. And of course, it'll require more in-depth evaluation of the induction as a whole, as well as particular aspects, as, as Tista said, in those exemplar sites, perhaps, needed to see which bits work most effectively, which bits offer best value for money. So it'll have to build on the preliminary evaluation that we have done. And, and you know, in, in from now, I hope that communities of practice uh, emerge uh, because they're much needed to share resources and best practice across regions or trusts, you know, neighboring trusts maybe. And in that regard, we have plenty of offers of support from many of our speakers. In fact, several such as Sujay and Samir actually proposed that their their email addresses may may be shown on screen but the problem with that is of course it's going to the, these are going to be removed in in 30 seconds from now we will post those on the ethnicity and health unit website and you can take a look at which of our speakers offer you support going into the future next slide please sunny so um now um this is it we, I'm going to leave you with something that Maya Angelou, that amazing writer, poet, and, and a civil rights activist once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So please, friends, I mean, my plea to you is go out there and be kind. Treat people as you would have them treat you. Because that's, as Tista said, pointed out, you know, it's, it, it allows them to, the IMGs, to achieve their full potential. And that's good for them. It's good for us. And above all, it's good for our patients and the public. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.